Hello and welcome to the weekly Forex Outlook at XM.com. It will be a busy week with the spotlight falling on the OPEC Plus meeting, as well as upcoming US and Eurozone inflation data. I'm Maria Pachardavis and joining me is lead investment analyst Rafi Boyajian. So Rafi, let's begin with the OPEC Plus meeting that was initially scheduled for November 26th, but got postponed to Thursday the 30th. What was the reason behind this change and how might the outcome of this meeting impact oil prices? Well, Maria, that, that is right. We did get a postponement uh, in that uh, what was building up to be quite an important meeting. Uh, so it's still going to be important, of course, the decision that we are going to get. Uh, so it does appear that uh, some um, members within OPEC aren't too happy uh, about uh, cutting production. Uh, up until now, it's mainly been Saudi Arabia that's kind of been contributing to these cuts. Um, and other countries were actually uh, underproducing. And more recently, they've been able to uh, raise their output to their, you know, to the required quota levels. Uh, so just as when they're about to meet their quota, they're not very too, they're not uh, too willing to, uh, to cut again. Uh, but probably we will get some kind of an agreement. Uh, the question is that even if we do get uh, the production cuts uh, either being extended or we get even deeper cuts, um, you know, the fact that there is uh, some reluctance there uh, within the, the alliance, OPEC and non-OPEC uh, alliance, it's unlikely that uh, we're going to get uh, any uh, further reductions uh, at some point in 2024 should the uh, demand outlook for oil uh, remain weak. Uh, so that kind of limits uh, the potential gains for oil prices because uh, it does possibly mean that uh, even if we do get some kind of uh, agreement uh, that we may uh, nevertheless end up uh, with uh, supply glut uh, in the early part of uh, 2024. Um, so, um, there might be some relief on the back of a deal. Oil prices might gain in the short term, but I think the overall outlook for oil prices is likely to, to, to remain bearish for the time being. Moving over to the U.S. now, it will be packed with data releases, but the real highlight will be Thursday's figures containing personal income and spending, as well as the core PCE price index. What are we expecting there and what are the risks for the dollar? So it is going to be a pretty packed week uh, for U.S. data. Uh, as you said, uh, the PC inflation number numbers will be the more important ones. Uh, we're also going to get the ISM manufacturing PMI. Uh, that's kind of been uh, in contractionary territory for the past year. Uh, we may see some improvement for November, but the, the index is expected to remain below 50. So that's probably going to uh, sort of confirm the market view uh, that the Fed is done and probably we're going to get rate cuts. Uh, but of course, the main focus will be on, uh, first of all, personal spending uh, and personal incomes, uh, which are expected to have moderated in uh, October. Um, so again, that will be in line with the markets, uh, where the markets see the Fed uh, rate path going. Uh, but uh, then uh, we've got the core PC price index uh, as well. Uh, now, this has been declining lately. It was kind of uh, flat earlier in the year. Uh, the problem is, is it falling fast enough? Markets think it is. So we're probably going to see uh, the core PC um, ease to 3.5%, maybe a little bit weaker than that. Uh, so that should keep the markets happy. But then we're also going to get a lot of Fed speakers, including Chair Powell himself. So they may trust, try to steer the market more uh, along where they see the rate path uh, heading. Uh, so the risk to the dollar will really be, uh, we can really see both upside and downside risks for the, uh, for the greenback in the coming week. Turning to the Eurozone now, we'll also get flash inflation readings on Thursday. Are we expecting further easing? And what's the outlook for the Euro? So uh, the euro has actually managed to uh, post a very decent rebound against the U.S. dollar. Um, the question is, can, is that rebound sustainable? Uh, and that uh, uptrend might be tested next week because uh, euros on inflation is expected to continue to come down. We're going to see the, probably the headline rate uh, fall to 2.8%. Uh, of course, any upside uh, surprises uh, would uh, 
boost the euro, but overall, uh, it does appear that uh, things inflation is coming under control uh, in the euro area. Uh, so it's hard to see uh, whether you know if the, the, the euro uptrend is going to be uh, it can be stretched, and it's probably going to depend on as much on the dollar uh, as then on as, as well as on the euro. Moving to New Zealand now, the RBNZ will meet on Wednesday. What is the state of inflation in New Zealand at the moment? And do you think policymakers are done hiking for now? Well, inflation in New Zealand uh, is still relatively high. It is coming down. Uh, of course, it's uh, worth uh, considering that uh, they publish CPI data quarterly. Uh, so probably uh, it has come down uh, much more uh, since uh, that uh, last uh, data set. Uh, but uh, RBNZ it will probably hold rates and they will probably signal that uh, they've reached uh, peak uh, rates. Uh, but what's going to be more important for the New Zealand, though, uh, is the projected rate path uh, uh, in the, the latest monetary policy statement. Um, at the, in the last report, they did project uh, modest cuts at the end of 2024, although this was based on uh, rates peaking slightly higher than 5.5%. Uh, so we might well end up uh, with a new uh, rate path that sees rates holding flat through 2024, uh, and that might be seen as slightly hawkish uh, from the from the RBNZ. Uh, on the other hand, uh, markets are also paying attention to the economic data, which has been somewhat weak. We are seeing notable slowdown in the New Zealand economy. Uh, we are seeing a bit of a pickup in unemployment and a sluggish consumption. So even if the RBNZ does come out being a little bit more hawkish than anticipated, uh, markets might not ne necessarily be convinced by that. Uh, and so uh, the overall, the, the meeting will probably be neutral uh, as far as the New Zealand dollar is concerned. And finally, over in Canada, we'll get third quarter GDP numbers on Thursday before the employment report on Friday. How has the loonie been performing recently? And what does the road ahead look like for the currency? Well, that, that is a very interesting question about the Canadian dollar because it actually has been underperforming. Uh, it's, uh, if you compare to Australian and New Zealand dollars, the other commodity currencies have been doing a lot better. Even the euro and the pound have managed to recover against the US dollar. Uh, the the loonie, not so much. And that's mainly because uh, of the fact that oil prices have been falling for, for the past few months. Uh, in addition to that, um, up until a couple of months ago, investors were expecting uh, weren't really expecting many rate cuts, if at all, from the Bank of Canada in 2024. Uh, so we've had rate cuts being priced in uh, over the past few weeks, and so that's really also taken its toll uh, on the Canadian currency. Uh, so we may see some a bit of an upside for the loonie should the GDP uh, and jobs numbers uh, beat expectations uh, in the coming week. They will be important, uh, but uh, the other th on the other side of the equation, we've got uh, the OPEC decision, of course. So if OPEC failed to agree to any sort of uh, meaningful production cuts, uh, then the loonie might suffer on the back of that, and that would offset uh, any potential uh, positive signs on the economy from the data. Ravi, thanks so much. This was the weekly Forex Outlook here at XM.com.